All right, and now on with the show. First step to pitch, we have Allison Avery. Allison Avery is a graduate of University of Texas Longhorn and spent her first few years after college in journalism and working for Habitat for Humanity and AmeriCorps. Having decided to come to the UCLA Producers Program, Allison seeks to make independent films that challenge audiences' perceptions and raise questions about the human condition. Please welcome Allison Avery and her pitch, A Woman in the Shadow. My pitch for you today is called A Woman in the Shadow. It's set in early Nazi Germany and is based on the lives of iconic filmmaker Fritz Lang and his wife Thea von Harbo, two people who were so in love and so in sync that others dared to use the term soulmates. But Thea was more than just Fritz's wife, she was a screenwriter too, and the films he's most remembered for, like M and Metropolis, were as much hers as they were his. And the two operated perfectly together, they co-wrote together and where Fritz was hot-tempered and irrational, Thea was cool and calculated, and they were both incredibly intelligent. And in 1933, they were at the top of their game. They were national icons, and they were powerful both in and out of the film community. But all this changed when the Nazis came to power. In late 1933, Fritz boarded a train to Paris and didn't return to Germany until years after the war. Thea, on the other hand, stayed behind and joined the Nazi party and became one of the most prolific screenwriters of the Reich. Now, years later, when Fritz was asked about the split, he would often lie or ramble or come up with, with some crazy story, but mostly he would blame it on Thea for having become a Nazi. But how could the woman who had railed against the Nazis and even written anti-Nazi films become one of them? This is Thea's story, the one we haven't gotten to hear before. So Fritz and Thea met in 1920 when they were tasked with writing a screenplay together. Their connection was instantaneous and intense, but they were both already married. They resisted at first, but eventually gave in to temptation and began having a passionate affair. It had its consequences, though. Fritz's first wife, Lisa, caught him and Thea in bed together and committed suicide. Thea divorced her husband and married Fritz. It was a dark, troubled beginning, but at least the two of them could finally be together. In 1933, Fritz and Thea have been married for 10 years. This is when they meet the newly minted Minister of Propaganda, Joseph Goebbels, a man who, at this point, is still trying to prove his own worth. And Goebbels tells them that he is confiscating their latest film, The Last Testament of Dr. Mabuse, for being anti-Nazi. Goebbels tells them, no big deal, though. All you have to do is change the ending of the film. Fritz, of course, the artist, goes ballistic. Thea keeps her cool, though. In an effort to both manipulate and distract Goebbels, she offers to throw a star-studded par party in his honor. Goebbels is smarter than Thea bargains for, though, and he is not so easily fooled. He says the party is a wonderful idea and goes along with it but the next day calls the SS and tells them to assign a soldier to start spying on the couple. This is Albert Ehrlich. Now, Ehrlich is young and inexperienced, so it's no surprise when Thea figures out quickly that he's following her. But he's also smart and thorough. And in his research, he uncovers evidence that strongly suggests that Fritz's first wife, Lisa, did not commit suicide. She was murdered. Before Ehrlich has a chance to submit this report, though, Thea approaches him with a deal. See, Ehrlich wants to marry a young woman, but she is of Slavic descent and will not pass the mandatory SS purity test. So Thea tells him she will convince Fritz to change the film and use the, her opportunity of being in Goebbels' good graces to ask to have the purity test waived for a young woman she knows. In exchange, Ehrlich must forget everything he knows about Lisa's death. Ehrlich agrees. Now, despite Thea's best efforts, Fritz refuses to change even a single frame of the film and instead suggests that they just leave the country, which Thea is totally okay with. They go straight to the train station and giddily buy tickets for Paris, leaving the next morning. But Thea's heart sinks when she sees Ehrlich standing in the crowd at the station, and she knows he won't let her leave, not yet and not like this. She secretly speaks with him and tells him that she's tried everything and she just cannot get him to change the film but Ehrlich has a way. 
Very early the next morning, Fritz receives an anonymous letter telling him to change the film or he'll be reported immediately. With it is his birth certificate, which very clearly displays the word Jewish. And this is a secret and terrifies Fritz and one he and they have been guarding closely and cannot let out. They decide to postpone their departure while Fritz recuts the film begrudgingly and angrily and they delivers the final product to Goebbels, who is then happy to oblige when she asks for a favor for a young SS soldier. Fritz and Thea's bags are packed. They are sitting by the front door, and they are about to leave for the train station. But two SS officers show up and arrest Thea. At the station, Goebbels tells her that word of her favor had spread, and someone connected the dots, and Ehrlich gave her up. So now Goebbels knows that not only is Fritz a murderer, he's a Jewish murderer. But he says he'll drop all the charges, destroy the birth certificate, if Fritz and Thea will run the new Nazi film commission. Now Thea knows that Fritz will never agree to this. And she asks Goebbels if he can let Fritz leave the country, she'll stay behind and do whatever he wants. Now Goebbels, of course, he asks Thea why she would be so willing to save a man who's capable of killing his wife. And Thea says that she knows that Fritz didn't kill Lisa. Goebbels again brings up the evidence that Ehrlich had provided him. And she says, no, Ehrlich was right. Lisa was murdered. But it wasn't Fritz. It was me. She explains to Goebbels that all those years ago, when Lisa caught them in bed together, she threatened suicide. And Fritz told her he would never see Thea again. But Thea could not bear to live with that thought, and it drove her to do something she'd never thought she'd ever be capable of. She hid in the Lang's house, and when Fritz left, she shot Lisa and staged a suicide. It's a secret she's been living with for over a decade, and she's never told anyone. And she tells Goebbels Fritz can just never, ever know the truth. Goebbels agrees to keep her secret and gives her 24 hours to push Fritz away. Fritz, the one person she cannot comprehend living without. He's waiting for her outside the station, and he hugs her as if they've been apart for years. And she lets him hold her, knowing it will be the last time, and never wanting it to end. Once they're at home, she steals herself and starts an argument. She tells Fritz she wants to stay behind and join the Nazi party. Goebbels has offered her a prestigious position, and she's ready to step out from behind Fritz's shadow and be her own woman, and move on alone. Fritz, confused and very hurt and angry, storms out of the house. And while he's gone, Ehrlich comes to apologize, and Thea tells him she needs one last favor. Fritz comes home very late that night and opens the, darken the, room, the door to their darkened bedroom and sees Thea naked, sitting on top of a young man, her back to the door. Fritz doesn't say a word. He just stands there as his world ends. And Ehrlich, who's terrified, looks up at Thea, who's silently crying, and watches as a teardrop rolls down her cheek and hits his pants, which are still buckled. Fritz leaves and boards a train the next day for Paris, while Thea dresses a room full of Nazis, now as one of them. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of information. How, how much of that is true? That's a good question. <laughs> the, um, the timing of events um, is mostly true, but my writer has taken a lot of creative liberties. The theory that Fritz or Thea murdered Lisa is, um, is one that's been expanded upon greatly, but, but this definitely is not a you know, true story. Mm -hmm. How, um, where did the uh, research come from? Like, are you basing it off of anything? My writer has done extensive research. She's even gone to Berlin um, and basically read every book there is to read and every article about Fritz Lang and Thea von Harbo. But it's, it's, all pu it's all in the public domain. There's yes. nothing, there's no Correct. rights issues. No IP to base it on, no. How did this become your project? How did you guys get together and how did you work with the writer? Um, well, that's a funny story. My writer is actually one of the producers who will be pitching here tonight, Julia Fontana. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, she actually, 
Um, she had written this uh, originally as a screenplay, not, not this story exactly, but a Fritz Lang story um, at university and undergrad. And uh, this story kind of was born out of that, and it's one that she's always wanted to write. And she had written a short film about it, um, and I just fell in love with it. And I asked her if she'd be willing to, to write the feature for me to use as my thesis, and she agreed. And how did you guys work together? Um, we, sh I mean, I've been involved in the process since day one. She, um, we had gone over the story, and she brought me several different uh, ways that she had thought that maybe she could tell it, either through flashback or with various characters, like the Ehrlich character, for instance. And, um, and we just kind of decided on a path, and she set forth. She brought me treatments, and we've done various rewrites, and the story has actually evolved quite a bit since the beginning. Is there one major flashback where you see the um, murder instead of suicide, or are there? Yes. So mm. when, when Thea confesses to Goebbels that she was actually the one who killed Lisa, that's when you flash back to, to that scene. I mean, you told it in a very riveting way. I was like mm -hmm. going back and forth. Who am I empathic, sympathetic? Um, I mean, at the end, Fritz Lang did nothing wrong, mm -hmm. and she does something sort of sacrificial, but she's also a murderer. Yes. So it's very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> Is there um, a director attached? There's not. Who do you see directing this? Honestly, one of our top choices is Florian Henkel von Donnersmark. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I mean, Stephen Daldry, Joe Wright. No. And budget? How big do you think this should be? Well, obviously, there are a bunch of different versions of this movie. Um, I, I think that it could be done in in a way that's justifiable to it to at twenty million or so. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about the picture you envision out of that budget? Sure. I I think with that budget we can. I mean, I, I think in general we we can attract good talent because it is a rich story and it's also Fritz Lang, and I think a lot of directors would want to do a Fritz Lang story. Um, and the characters are very nuanced. So at that budget, I see attracting top-level actors and a top-level director. And, and the sorry. goal is a, a riveting love story, right? Yes. And well, there obviously there are elements of the thriller as well, but, but mostly it is, it is a, a love story. What would the poster look like? What kind of one-liner would it have or tagline? Well, that's the one I came up with, but I'm not uh -huh. a designer. Um, uh, but my tagline was, how far would you go for the one you love? Wow. Uh -huh. um, that's, that was a question. Did you mention who would be playing these parts in your mind, at least? Um, if I had my first pick, it would be Diane Kruger and Michael Fassbender in the Fritz and Thea roles. Um, yeah, those, those are my top choices. And you'd shoot it in Germany or Austria? or Ideally, yes, in Germany. Mm -hmm. How old are they during the major part of the action? They are, true to the story, they are early 40s. During the major part of the action? Mm -hmm. when he's mm -hmm. what, is the, what is the spread of time the movie takes place over? The, the beginning is told when they first meet, so that's... 1920 about, okay. and then the rest of it takes place all in 1933. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Allison, very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you.